I want to tell you all, those who are watching us through this live streaming, first we thank you. We thank those chanters and altar boys and deacons and those who are videotaping for being here. And I want to assure you that your church is in prayer. I know you're not here physically, but I know everyone where they sit. I miss you. I miss your beautiful faces. I miss your children. I miss the noise that they used to make. I miss the choir, the ushers, the altar boys. And I miss you till we meet again soon, praying that God shall remove this dark cloud from this universe and make us to rejoice in his name again, to believe in him, to pray for him, and to bless one another. God bless you and keep you safe. Father. Wow. Thank you, Una. <clears throat> In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today as an Orthodox Christian community, we find ourselves at the fourth Sunday of our Lenten journey together, where we gather yet again here in church. This time, as Father George mentioned, through the miracle of the internet. And we gather for a very specific purpose. It's the same purpose that brings together Christian men and women throughout the entire world, along with their families, at least once a week, but often much more than that. And it's the same purpose that brings together hundreds and thousands of people, including hierarchs, priests, world dignitaries, church leaders, faithful parishioners, and all of God's chosen faithful throughout the entire world every time they gather together. And that purpose, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, that unifying mystery that unites and gathers people in amazing ways and brings them together in harmony and in peace, in remarkable places, and at any given moment in time is nothing less than prayer and Holy Communion with God. And it's on this fourth Sunday of Great and Holy Lent every year where we commemorate a great and pious Christian forerunner who we now commemorate and remember as a saint in our holy churches, St. John Climacus. So this morning, on this day where we remember St. John, I'd like to reflect, reflect on the importance and miraculous unifying power of prayer. Because St. John himself had a lot to say about the topic of prayer. And Christians around the world have been benefiting from his words for the past 1,400 years. And the reason why we commemorate St. John Climacus today, on this fourth Sunday of Great and Holy Lent, is because St. John left for us a great and tremendous resource about how to lead a Christ-centered and a Christ-focused and a spiritually enlightened way of life. In a book that he wrote <clears throat> called The Ladder of Divine Ascent, St. John was a 7th century monk who lived at St. Catherine's Monastery at the foot of Mount Sinai, the site where God met Moses and gave him the Ten Commandments, an event that's recorded in the Old Testament. His book was originally written for the other monks that he lived with at St. Catherine's Monastery, but it has since become a classic work 
of Christian spirituality that transcends time and speaks to all Christians. And it just, it's just as applicable today as it was 1,400 years ago when St. John originally wrote it. In his book, St. John presents the spiritual life as a life that is similar to a person climbing and ascending a ladder that consists of 30 steps. And each step on the ladder represents a specific virtue that the person climbing the ladder obtains on his or her own spiritual ascent. And at the top of his ladder is none other than Jesus Christ himself waiting for us in his heavenly kingdom. And steps number 19 and number 28 on St. John's Ladder are both dedicated to an understanding of the mystical power of prayer. In the book, St. John calls prayer the union of man with God. And by reason of its action, prayer upholds the world. And he says that it's the power of prayer that brings about reconciliation with God. And he refers to prayer as the mother of all virtues. And he says that prayer should be simple and that prayer brings joy to both a community when they are joined together and to an individual praying alone. And he says that prayer leads to a life that radiates with God's love and grace. Because in the New Testament, we know that Jesus says, wherever two or three are gathered in his name, he will be there also in their midst. So it's prayer that unites us together as Christ's holy body here on earth. Together we are saved. Together we are in communion with each other. And together we are in communion with God. This is really the importance about why it's so vital to come together as a community in church. This is really the reason why we come to church, to pray and to be in communion with each other and to be in communion with God. And in the gospel lesson this morning, we heard about what happens when we become complacent with our prayer and complacent with those things that help us build up a spiritual way of life. In the gospel, we heard about a man who brought his son to be healed after he was unsuccessfully healed by the disciples. And it says that Jesus did indeed heal the boy, saying to the Father, if you can believe, all things are possible to those who believe. And later, when the disciples asked Jesus why they couldn't heal the boy, even though they had been successful many times before, Jesus told them that this kind of healing can only come through prayer and through fasting. Or in other words, Jesus was saying to his disciples on that day that it wasn't necessarily the boy himself that needed healing but that it was the disciples themselves that may have been held back by their own disbelief or by their own weakness or by their own illness or by their own prayer or by their own fasting or by whatever it was that may have been holding them back from believing and from being able to accomplish the healing themselves. And so Jesus reminded them in the gospel lesson this morning that true faith and true belief is only built through the practice of prayer and through the practice of fasting. 
And just like the disciples, we all have things within us that may be holding us back also. Our lives are incredibly busy, and we may sometimes find ourselves compromising the very things we need most in life in order to pr prioritize a less important activity. And if there is anything positive coming out of this COVID-19 worldwide lockdown, it may be that we are getting a chance to look at how busy our lives have been. And we're getting a chance to slow down a little bit and reflect and simplify our lives and simply be with our families in our homes and prioritize what truly is most important in our lives. So I urge you this morning, dear brothers and sisters, to never let ourselves get to the point where we compromise our prayer because it's prayer that truly unites us to Christ. In the Gospel of St. John, Jesus tells his disciples that I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. The apostles, when they came to Jesus, to ask him about why they couldn't heal the boy, must have forgotten this very important and critical lesson. And Jesus tells them that this relationship comes through nothing but prayer and through nothing but fasting. Father Thomas Hopko, who was a professor at St. Vladimir Seminary, once said about prayer that prayer is defined as that which unites us to God's grace in everything that we do, with all of our soul, with all of our heart, with all of our body, with all of our emotions, with all of our passions, with all of our senses, with all of our activities, and with all of our relationships. He said that prayer is being united to God, that it's being in union with the Father through the Son, in and by the Holy Spirit. That prayer is glorifying God, and that prayer is thanking God, and that prayer is praising God, that prayer is knowing God, and that prayer is discovering God's holy will for our lives and following it. Or in other words, Father Thomas was saying that prayer is transformation. That somehow, by God's grace, through prayer, we have the power to actually transform our lives from this world into the world which is to come. From this corrupt, fallen, and divided reality into God's eternal paradise that he has promised for us. And so, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let this be our focus as we enter into our fifth week of Great and Holy Lent this year. Let prayer be our focus this week. And let prayer be our purpose, especially as we continue to cope with this worldwide coronavirus epidemic. Because according to the teaching of the Lord himself, it's prayer that has power to unite us. And it's prayer that has power to strengthen us. And it's prayer that has the power to heal us. And just like Jesus told the disciples in the Gospel lesson this morning, it's prayer that has the power to build belief within us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.